Let's talk about reducing fractions. In order to talk about fractions and do it well, we need to first talk a little bit about the parts of a fraction. Um, but we'll keep it quick. If I give you a fraction like 3 over 5, we know it has a top and a bottom. The top is called the numerator. The bottom is called the denominator. When we go to reduce fractions or do just about anything to a fraction, remember anything you do to the top, you also have to do to the bottom or it's not, or you've changed the value of the fraction. Now, and the other thing that I'm going to mention here is if I have something like 3 and 1 7th or 22 over 7, this one is called a mixed fraction. This one's called an entire. And you can see why. This is mixed because we have a number mixed with a fraction. Entire, everything's inside of it. These two things are actually equal. Those two fractions are. We're not going to talk about how to convert that right now, but those uh, terms might come up as we're working. So let's start there. Now, to reduce. We need to understand uh, a little bit about equal fractions first. Um, but important again, anything you do to the top, do to the bottom. Okay? So let's play with a fraction. Let's play with three-fifths. That's a lovely little fraction. Um, I'm going to tell you that three-fifths is exactly the same as six-tenths. It's exactly the same as 24 fortieths or 300 five hundredths. Those all have the same value. And if you don't believe me, you can grab a calculator and punch in. Anytime we uh, remember a fraction, this line in the middle means divide. So three fifths means three divided by five. And if you do that in your calculator, you get 0.6. If you go six divided by 10, you get 0.6 and so on. This one's 0.6. This one's 0.6. They have the same mathematical value. So who cares? Why do we change them? Why do we have all of these? Because as we do math, sometimes things are going to appear like 300 over 500, but 3 over 5 is a lot easier to work with if there's more steps to do, or if we're just communicating to someone. Okay? If we talk about um, a measurement, for instance, 3 fifths is a lot easier to work with than 300 five hundredths. So how did I do that? How did I get 3 fifths to turn into 6 tenths? I went times 2. And anything I do on the top, I had to do on the bottom. And so on. Here I went, well, let's go times 4. And for this last one, I actually went from here, and I multiplied top and bottom by 100 to get fractions that have the same value. Now when we go to reduce, we're going the opposite direction. If I gave you 300 over 500, how do we get back to 3 fifths? Well, if multiplying made it messy, we're going to tidy it up using dividing. So let's say I gave you a fraction like 48 over 96. Somewhere along the way, you've learned to reduce fractions, and you were told to divide top and bottom by the GCF, meaning the greatest common factor. And that's exactly what you should do. But you know what? When you're writing a test or looking at some really big, crazy numbers, that might not appear to your brain really fast. So here's my suggestion. Let's look at this fraction and say, hey, what can I, what, what can I see that I could divide both of those things by to make it prettier, to make it easier to work with? I see that both of these numbers are even, right? 8 and 6 are even numbers, so 48 and 96 are even numbers, meaning they divide by 2. 
So rather than worrying about a GCF, I'm going to go, hey, I can divide by 2. And I can get to 24 over 48. Now, if you see a bigger number that divides into both, use it. If you are, are good at numbers and you went, hey, I can divide both of these by 8. Cool. But it doesn't matter what you use. All of those are ways of reducing the fraction. Now, what's our goal when we reduce? We actually want to get it all the way to something called lowest terms. And what does that mean? We want to get it to where nothing will divide more. Because right now, if I look at the one I tried up here, 24 and 48 are still even. So I could do this again. I could divide by 2 again and say, hey, this is 12 over 24. And I could do it even again. And I can get to 6 over 12. Now notice I'm at 6 over 12 with both of them. But it's not lowest terms because they're both still even. I could divide by 2 again. Or you might say, hey, you know what? Both of these divide by 6. Now be careful. Students screw this up all the time. They go, well, 12 divided by 6 is 2. I'm done because these 6s go away now. If you think about 6 out of 12, top number smaller than the bottom one, this can't be 2. This can't equal two whole things. Instead, 6 divided by 6 is 1 over 2. This is a half. Now this is in lowest terms. Okay, anytime we write a number like 2 just sitting by itself, it's really over a, a, an invisible little over 1 that we don't write because we know it's there and we know what that means. 1 half and 2 over 1 aren't the same. Be careful of that. So let's reduce one more. Let's go 143 and on the top let's go 77. These are not even. Right? 7 and 3 are odd numbers. 2 doesn't go into these. So now, holy cow, what are you going to do? We've got to find something that works. This looks like it divides by 7. Nice. Does this one? I grab my calculator. I say, hey, 143 divided by 7. That's not going to work. But if I go 77 divided by 7, what do I get? I get 11. No, this was messy. Didn't work. But notice if 77 divided by 7 is 11, that means I can also, I could try dividing by 11. I know I'm going to get 7. What happens if I go 143 divided by 11? I get 13. This is in lowest terms. How do I know that for sure? These two numbers are both something called prime numbers, meaning nothing divides into them but themselves. 7, the only thing that divides into 7 is 7. And 7 doesn't divide into 13, so I know I have lowest terms. Which is awesome. And if we had to use it, that's a lot tidier and less stress to use than the 77 over 143.